So tonight, we're going to talk about why some of you are not going to be great travel bosses and how, if you are not in that space yet, how you can be great. All right. So before I get started, let me introduce you to who I am. If you are new to this group, you are new to this live and you've never joined me live. My name is Sunday Gardner, the online travel boss. Uh, soon to be a registered trademark. I'm super excited about that. So we just got news a couple of weeks ago that our registration has been assigned an attorney. <laughs> Not an attorney, but uh, a, a, I guess whoever is in the trademark in the patent office. I can't remember what the my lawyer said that they're called. But anyway, we are on our way to getting uh, registered. So I come to you every week. So it used to be Wednesdays, it is now Mondays, and I come to you every Monday night talking all things launching, operating, and having a profitable, so not just having a travel business, but having a profitable travel business. And so what we are going to talk about is what are the keys to your success as being a boss? Now, you know, when I started in the online space, you know, boss was like a really big thing. Everybody was calling themselves girl boss, boss this, boss that, you know, everybody was boss. So, you know, when I first started training, I was the marketing boss because I didn't do the travel industry. I did general uh, training, teaching smart uh, small business owners how to market their businesses. And then a couple of years ago, I just started focusing just on the travel industry because there's such a need. There are so many people being recruited every single month by host agencies or whatever. And you all are in the same boat I was in when I was recruited, which is I couldn't figure out how to make this thing work. I couldn't figure out how to get on a discounted trip. I couldn't figure out how to book my, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't think I've ever told the story, but my husband, we owned a barbershop in Texas. And when I became, when I told him that I was going to sign up, I didn't, I told him that I was going to do travel, but I wasn't going to do it like full time because I was doing coaching. He, you know, he cuts hair and he's the owner of the barbershop. So he's in front of a lot of people and, you know, he's a supportive guy. And he tells a client of his who has the soccer team that, yeah, my wife's doing this travel thing and she can get your, your soccer team booked. And I, I started looking around in the back office and I could not figure out how to freaking book the team. So like I ran away from this client, like the guy was like, Sunday, are you going to like, are you going to give me some information? And I like, 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 so when I get nervous, like I like start sweating in my armpits and I was like, I like, so I was like hiding from the guy cause I couldn't figure out how to book his damn 16 kid trip. Like I couldn't figure it out. Like I went in the back office and I was like, I would go like to my normal commercial sites and I'd be like, this doesn't look anything cheaper than when he can get anything. So I could not figure out how to book the damn trip. So I lost out on that client and my husband got the client for me. So, you know, I subsequently after learning this business and learning all that I could do uh, about this business, I realized uh, that there are so many people who are in the same position. So this is the reason why I created this group. I created our coaching program and my entire full-time focus is on helping individuals like you who want to start their business and get be successful get clients consistently make money in this business and not do it for a hobby so now i'm no no shade on the people who just want to make a little extra income but my clients that work with me they want to make this a business the reasons why they give me they want to do this business is because they want to leave a legacy for their family they want to quit their full-time job and do this they want to travel more they want to be the bomb.com in their space. Does that sound like what you guys want to like? Do you want that for your travel business? You want to be the go-to person for your business. Like when people see your travel name, they see your name, they think, oh my God, she is amazing, right? Is that what you guys want for your travel business? That's what my clients want for their travel business. They want to be able to do this on their own terms, right? But I'm going to tell you, and the topic that we're talking about today, not everybody's cut out for that. And let me tell you why that is. First thing is, many of you guys are recruited. Many of you have never started a business, right? 
type of one if that's you you just started your business you've never started a business before in the past right type of one i'd like to see how many on who are joining me live that this is your story you've never done a business before this is your first business you were recruited by somebody and you're like now what <laughs> now what do i do right so you know hopefully you're not like me you're hiding from prospective clients because you don't know what you're doing Right. That I, I still and I don't know that I've told that story many, but I will never forget. Like, so I dodged that guy like I would go to the barber shop and, you know, he would be there sometimes. And I would like I'd look at the window and then I'd be like, oh, shit, I'm not going in there because I don't want to have to like I totally failed him. He was ready to spend money. I couldn't figure out how to put together a package. I couldn't figure out how to quote. And I lost the money. And I think my husband referred a couple of people to me because all he had to do was open his mouth and say, my wife does this. And he, you know, he, people would be like, okay, let me sign up. I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I was like, and I actually, to add to the story, stopped, like, I was like, Otis, don't tell another person that I do this because I don't know what I'm doing. I was so frustrated when I first signed up I, I was just like, don't, I, I, I don't have time for this. And then I just started focusing 100% on coaching. So I actually was a travel pro, wasn't a pro, but I, I was signed up with my host agency for two years before I started doing anything with it, right? So I understand what it's like to be in the space that you're in, right? Now, what I may have different than you all is, is I actually had opened up businesses. I understood how to market in the online space. And I knew that, but I didn't know how to operate this business. And so if you are new to business, you are at a deficit twofold. You don't know how to operate your business, the travel side of the business, and you don't know how to market and get clients, right? Type of one, if that also sounds like you. If you don't know how to get clients, you're depending on friends and family to get your clients. And you don't know the first thing about marketing a business, operating your business, type of one, let me know in the comments. Now, this is not intended for you to feel bad, but like to understand where you are because there are many people who are in this situation. I'm gonna tell you the host agency's recruiting game is strong, right? So. There are some people that are recruiting that I would call unscrupulous, that they're not being entirely honest about what you can expect when you join this business. And there's some people who don't, you know, maybe paint a really great picture about all of the, the perks of having, uh, being in this business. And what I will tell you is this, there's truth and lies in everything that may be told to you or have been told to you. And my goal in this group is to, to shoot straight. Right. I don't know how to shoot cricket. I don't know how to come cricket. That's just the way I am. I'm going to shoot straight. Some of you may not may like my style and some of you may not like my style. For those that don't like my style, please feel free to leave the group. But if you are OK with a few uh, cuss words being dropped, I'll try not to drop the F-bomb, but I definitely say uh, shit a lot. But if you're OK with that and you're ready to like listen to the truth and your your feelings aren't going to hurt, get hurt, then I'm definitely the person that you want to stick with to get your travel business on track. So what we're going to talk about are my four keys to success. I've been doing this for a while now. So I've been coaching in the travel space full time now, I would say, since 2018. That is when I released our first program. So. It's been more than two years. Is it what year are we in? It's been three years now. This summer made three years. This May made three years. So I have been coaching people like you in the space for three years. And what I have discovered is pretty much consistent in terms of when you start this business, you are told many people, I'm not speaking to anyone specifically, but in general, what I hear from people that I talk to, and I talk to a lot of you all um, every week is is that this is a great opportunity for you to leave a legacy for your family right you know some of you may be in this because you want to recruit and build teams i'm not really talking to you i'm really talking to the the person out there that signed up because they do love travel and not only do they love travel they want that experience and they want to give the experience of travel to others that's who i'm talking to tonight so if you're a recruiter and you are strong in the recruiting game that's not really my bag 
I don't really teach people how to get more uh, team members and all that. That's not my thing. What I teach you is how to take this love of travel and how to make a business out of it. So, you know, many people are told during the recruiting process, there's like a hair on my lip, uh, during the recruiting process that, yes, this is the business that you can leave a legacy, right? Not only can you leave a legacy, you can make great money at it. And not only that, you can set, you can go on these amazing trips and see the world on your terms, right? Is that familiar? Like, is that some of the things that you may have heard? But the problem with that mentality is, right, it's, it's you're sold into this concept that travel is the bomb.com. And the reality is it is the bomb.com, but it's not for everybody. And let me tell you who it's not for. If you think that running your business is only going to cost you the value that the host agency charges you a month, you, you're not going to be successful. If you think that's all it's going to take, right? If you think just posting on your social media site is all that it's going to take, that you're going to put together a package, right? Let's say Aruba is my favorite uh, example. I've never been to Aruba. So as soon as things are settled down, Aruba is on my trip because it's my favorite example. But let's say you see this great package for Aruba and you post it on your personal page, business page, or wherever you're posting it, Instagram, I don't care, pick it. Pick up, you're doing a TikToks on it. I don't care, whatever you're doing. And you think that's all it's going to take for you to see success, you're never going to be a boss, right? And I don't mean the boss in terms of directing people, but being able to be in control of your own time, being able to determine your destiny when it comes to your business, right? So I've had several businesses. I've had several businesses that have done well. I've several businesses that have failed on their face flat ass on their face, right? I could tell you the story when I started my salon, the, the first version of my salon, I opened up my salon. Um, this was back in 2010. I uh, We had opened up a barbershop in 2006 to 2010. I was like, you know what? I'm quitting corporate America. I want to open up a salon. Our barbershop is successful. I opened up and I opened up with no plan, opened up and boom, for a month. I hired four people, had salary, I had a building, I had expenses. And for six weeks, we had zero sales, zero sales. I had to close shop for two months, rethink, or not rethink, think of my marketing plan, reopen, and that's what we did. So literally, I opened, failed, and reopened again, because I was already in contract. I couldn't close, right? And that's pretty much probably many of your stories as well. You've opened for business with no plan and you're not getting any sales, right? Like that, I've been there, I've done that, right? I've been, there. not only did I do that in my salon, right? I started this, I didn't really start the travel business. My husband announced like softly and I ran away because I, I wasn't prepared. So what do you need to be prepared? Number one, you all need to understand how to operate your travel business. And let me tell you where the information is not, right? Your host agency has given you the, the Pandora's box of supplier information, right? Many of you all have certificates out the wazoo of different supplier training that you have taken, right? How many of you have taken supplier training, right? Type me in the comments and let me know that's you, right? If you've taken, you know, cruise training, you know, my favorite training, and I still recommend this training. If you haven't taken Marriott training, do take Marriott training because I think it's a really good introduction to the uh, hotel industry ratings and all of that. But, you know, have you taken a bunch of travel supplier training, right? Yes, me, I'm seeing some me's in the comment. The problem with the supplier training is it doesn't teach you how to operate your business, right? It teaches you about them. It teaches you about the supplier, right? But it doesn't teach you how to operate. It's not gonna teach you how to book. It's not gonna teach you how to sell. It's not gonna teach you about your pricing. It's not gonna teach you about your business processes. It's not gonna teach you anything about your operations. So the number one key to your success is building out your operations, right? It's not gonna, you're not gonna learn it by yourself because it's you, you just, Everything that you know about travel when it comes to the inside is nothing that you know relative to booking at commercially. Everything that you know about booking commercially, going to a site, 
putting in the information and getting back results. That's about the only thing that's similar to having the inside knowledge, right? So the first thing that you've got to you've got to know is how to operate this thing, right? How to get the results that you want to get, right? So I want somebody to type the first key to success is operations, right? You've got to have an operation understanding of this business. Now, the way that you can do that is you can nickel and dime it, right? Every time you get a quote, you can go and you can try and figure out, well, who the hell am I going to go do the research with? You can try and get your upline to help you. You can try and get another travel professional to help you, right? And you can hope that you've got all the pieces together, right? How many of you guys are in that situation? Because literally when I, my, my husband's a client came to me and he wanted me to book this group trip, right? I mean, that could have literally could have been a thousand, you know, a couple of thousand dollars gross sales, a couple of hundred dollars in commission that I completely didn't know what to do with, right? How many are in that position where you, you're you getting quotes, but you don't even really know how to put them together, right? Quoting is just a part of your operation. That's not the full thing, but how many of you are in that position, right? Type me in the comments and let me know right? Operating your business is key. And it's not just the quoting. That's key. That's a core foundational um, item for your business, but it's not all that it comes to when it comes to your business. Some key things that you need to have in your business, right? So I know, and this is because the uh, people out there on the streets are telling me, right? You know, so the host agencies are trying to do a better job of telling you what you need to expect, making sure that you have the right forms, right? Right. But, you know, are, do you have a system that you're using to keep track of all your client data? Do you have terms and conditions? Right. Maybe you, you captured a contract online and you got and you're trying to piece the whole thing together. Right. Success requires that you operate, period. Like there's nothing else after that. Right. Success dictates that you operate your business efficiently. Right. Not only for yourselves, but to ensure that your clients have an amazing experience when they work with you, right? Who has ever worked? Now, you know, I'm not going to blast out Georgia, but, you know, I'm from Texas. I'm in Georgia. And I go to the doctor's office and I sit in the doctor's office for an hour before I was, I've was i ever seen. This is a family doctor, right? I expect that with my OBGYN, right? Because she's delivering babies and she's doing this. But my general family doctor, I make an appointment, maybe 15 minutes late. I don't expect to sit in the lobby for an hour, right? I get it, get back. The nurse takes care of me. And then I sit in there in the nurse's office for 45 minutes. What that tells me is their operations suck, <laughs> right? And your travel business is probably similar to that doctor's office. Does your operation suck? And let me give you some examples of what makes an operation suck for a travel business. Somebody tries to call you and you never get back to them. Or you don't even really have a method by which people can get in contact with you. Maybe you have your phone and you take days to get back, right? And then maybe your whole quoting process is not good, right? Maybe you're not making any money when you do do quotes. Maybe, I mean, that that sucks for you, right? Maybe not for your client, but it sucks for you, right? Right? Something happens on your trip. I was just talking, we were having a study hall last week, and one of the clients said that, uh, her general practice is to, you know, to check on the hotel to confirm uh, reservations about two weeks in advance, right? And so what she discovered is the hotel didn't open, right? But that's an operational issue. Is that even a part of your process? Do you do like do you do a check before your your or do you just hope and pray that you're, when your clients get there that things are going to be okay, right? Do you have some processes around not only booking, right, but management of the book, right? How do you get people into your, how do you get them to book with you, right? That's all operations, all right? So I've spent a lot of number two, num number one, that's operations. Number two key to your success is, before I tell you what the success item is, let's talk about like, what's your marketing strategy, right? So let me not be fancy, right? Let me not give you all these fancy terms. Let's, let's just talk regular, right? Like, where do you get your clients from? Who's giving you the bag, <laughs> right? I watch this guy and he says that all the time. It's like, I'm totally using the bag in a sentence th this week, right? Like who's giving you the bag, right? Who is it your clients? Is it your, is it, is your mom? Is it your mom's friend? Like who do you expect to be your clients? I'd like you to type in the comments. When you 
decided to start this business, who is your client? Who did you, who are you going after? And who do you expect to buy from me? From you? When I started in the travel business, right? I wasn't trying to sell anybody. I was just trying to get my family out of town. So I was my bag, right? I was, I was the bag, but I wanted my bag to be small. Like I wanted to spend the least amount of money, right? So when I started, it was about me, right? You guys just told me your reason for starting and doing this business is for others, right? You want to get discounts, some of you, but some of you love travel and you want to spread the love. Well, who do you want to spread the love to? Tell me in the comments. Right. So somebody says, I thought my family, Summer says a cold market, a cold market of what? I want you guys to be specific. Cold market is formal talk, right? We're, we're talking, we're talking to many of you guys are girls. We're talking girl to girl here. Who is your client? Who is this cold market of people that you want to go after every single day, week, month, quarter, whatever? Who are these people? Shabar says family and friends. Uh, Ronald says, okay, so we got a, we got a guy on, so sorry, girl to guy, guy to girl, girl to girl, whatever. We're all friends here. Tell me who, who you're going after. Friends, family, coworkers, and, re and recent group travel companions, all right? We got family, friends, coworkers, church, church members. Somebody says anyone, so you want to go after everybody, right? Anybody, anybody will pick up the phone and call you, that's who you want, right? So... Here's the reality, right? So I'm going to bust a couple of bubbles and I'm going to, uh, you know, hopefully smack you in the face and tell you what's really going to happen or what's going to happen. Uh, somebody says like-minded people. That's very big. And, I, you know, and I don't mean to be rude to you, uh, Shabar, but like-minded people, like what does that mean, right? I mean, I can relate to friends and family because at least you know who that is, right? But if you guys aren't clear about who you're going after, then the person that you're going after isn't clear either, right? Let me just say that. This is the, like marketing one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't know who you're going after, the person that you want to work with doesn't know either. They don't know that you're the bomb.com. you got to be super clear about who your audience is, right? And so this whole process of understanding who your audience is and who you want to go after, right? Before I go into the details of that, let's talk about this whole concept of friends and family right now i'm gonna you know i've been doing online business now for i don't know a long time and um i'm a serial business starter i was probably not so much as i was before but i certainly am a serial business starter and so when i first started and i literally joined facebook because i was trying to make sure my daughter wasn't doing anything she wasn't supposed to right so then I start posting on Facebook and I was like, I got all these friends on Facebook and boom, I'm going to start selling them my wares, right? And then it was like crickets. And this was back in 2010, 11, 12, right? This is like when Facebook was like really kind of new and there wasn't all these business people selling shit on Facebook like it is now. I mean, this was, you know, I mean, back in 2010, ads just started. There wasn't even really any ads like going on. You'd be on Facebook and nobody was bombarding you with there was no news feed. There was none of that, right? So back then, I was like, I'm going to start my business. I'm just going to just, I, you know what? I believed what the recruiter told me. And I'm not even talking about, I mean, I've tried MLM companies before. I've done it all, right? And, you know, all while doing my corporate job, because I'm like, I'm looking for a path out of corporate America. So I, uh, I, I started, I erroneously thought that it would be my friends and family that would buy for me. I would be all like, I'm dynamic. I've got a great personality, right? I could talk anybody into anything, right? You know, I'm a good salesperson. I was a really good retail salesperson back in the day. And I was like, you know, I can get my friends and family to buy. And the shit was crickets. Like nobody like responded to any of the things that you post. Like, I mean, I don't even know if you could like go on my timeline and look back, you know, 10, 15, 10 years ago when I first started joining and I was selling this and I was selling that, you know, and nobody responded. And I was like, this is some bullshit. Like, you know, my friends suck. <laughs> I was like, my friends suck. Like, I know that this product, because I wasn't the kind of person like, I mean, let me rephrase that. I believed in every product that I sold. I believed in it, right? And I am sure that you believe in travel and you love travel and you believe that your friends and family should understand that this is the bomb.com opportunity for you to be their travel agent, right? That's what you're probably thinking. 
That's what I thought. I mean, again, not travel, but when I started a business, I was like, they should buy from me because not only that, they're my friend and they're my family. And, you know, they should just do it because, right? I didn't give them a reason to. It was just like, I'm, I'm now, I'm, I'm now fill in the blank and I'm available for you to buy and I want to make a million dollars. So buy for me. So that was kind of the way I showed up. Right. And what I found is nobody showed up or reciprocated. So I showed up with my wares and nobody bought. Right. And so that's how I feel about friends and family is that I learned I shouldn't start a business expecting my friends and family to be my clients. If I'm going to start a viable business, I need to start a viable business and I'll let my friends and family know. But first of all, my first lesson is I shouldn't have the expectation that they are going to fund my business, right? That was number one. Number two is when they did come to me, they wanted a hookup. I'm not homie hookup. Like I'm not homie the hookup. That's not what my thing is. I don't bleed, sweat, and tear in my business to give people hookups, right? Now, I will run a family, I, I put together family friend trips, right, to locations. They can buy into that, but don't look to me to be a hookup. So once I realized that I shouldn't start a business to assume that my friends and family should buy into it, then I then flipped the script and said my friends and family shouldn't expect that they should get the hookup from any business that I have. They don't expect it from other service providers and they shouldn't expect it from me. But before I got to that stage, I had to come correct, right? I had to show up, not just being like, okay, I started this other new business, right? Because it really was like that. I was starting businesses like left and right. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that, right? So my friends and family were like, I have no idea what the hell Sunday's doing. Like, what the hell is she doing, right? And so one, when I stopped, begging my friends and family for their patronage and i flipped the script and focused on strangers right and determining who it is that i really wanted to work with and then i created a marketing strategy to get in front of those people my entire business life changed right does that make sense like you start a business because you want to you want you love travel and you want to give people the experience of travel but not everybody is your client right? Somebody typed that the, you know, their client is anyone, right? That's the wrong approach, right? Your friends and family, many of you said friends and family. Now don't get me wrong. I will sell the friends and family, right? But they're not my primary goal. They're not my primary client. They're not my only client. They're not the people that I'm trying, when I build marketing and when I get in front of people, it's not for my friends and family. It's for the person that I define is my ideal market, right? So I'm a travel coach. I tra I train travel professionals on how to make this business work, right? So when I'm on my personal page and I'm talking about coaching, and I don't even I'm not even really on my personal page anymore talking about coaching, but if I do, I'm talking to all the people who have joined my my page, right? Because they want to get to know Sunday and they're interested in coaching, right? My friends and family, I could give it. Holy damn about what what if they if they book a trip with me or not because I'm not I'm not advertising for them I'm not trying to attract them right so my attraction system is built around the client that I want friends and family are not a part of that mix so for those of you that said friends and family is your mix what I want you to do is really think about what has been your experience so far launching to your friends and family you know, trying to sell to your friends and family. I mean, is that an experience that you want to continue? I mean, if you do, okay, that's great. But if your experience with your friends and family thus far hasn't been great, then my recommendation is not just go and find strangers, but find strangers in a very specific area of this industry that you identify what area you want to specialize in, and then you find those clients that met, meet that special meet that specialization. Say that ten times. All right. So let me say that again. And this is referred to as my art system. So you want to specialize in some part of the travel business. Now, if you aren't joining me on Saturday, you're going to want to join me on Saturday because I'm going to spend the morning talking about specialization offers what it means to have a good operations and how you do that and really help you think through that process, right? But what I wanna say here is, 
if you don't understand what area of this business that you want to specialize in, many of you guys are going to tell me, well, I've, I've decided to specialize in groups. Saturday, I'm going to tell you why that's not such a great idea. I'm specializing in cruising, specializing in Mexico, right? But it still doesn't tell me who your audience is, right? Doesn't tell me what your client is, right? Well, I want, I want somebody who wants a group. Right? Well, what kind of group, right? I mean, there's so many different kinds of groups, right? So the first thing is, is you've got to have some way to attract your ideal client to you. What is that mechanism, right? It's not just throwing and posting on social media, random packages to your personal page, right? Because your ideal client is probably not even on your personal page yet. My ideal client's on my personal page. That's because it's all engineered that way. Like, you know, I don't know. There's some 1,500 people. They're not my personal friends. I don't know these people personally, right? People like my personal page because they want to get to know me as the person that I've presented them to, which is the online travel boss, right? Same thing for you. People that like your page, ultimately, you know, if you just, if you create a marketing strategy that's going to allow them to find you and then ultimately like you, they will know that who you are by virtue of what you've done in the marketing space in terms of presenting yourself as the expert. A great example of a niche is a wedding destination expert, right? So somebody who wants clients that want to get married in, in a non-traditional way, right? That's my favorite example. Everybody gets that, right? You don't have to try and figure out how that works, right? If you want to specialize in doing wedding destinations, that's a great niche, right? It's a great specific, we know who your client is, and then you can go after that person. So you don't want to be trying to get your mother's grandmother to go book with you. Now, granted, if, if your granny calls you up and says, baby, can you book me a trip? You can do it, but you're not trying to get all of the grannies doing that, right? Unless, of course, that's your specialty, right? My point is, is that you want to be super clear about who you want to attract, right? And then you want a system to attract them, right? Not only know who it is, but a system to get in front of them, have them start the conversation so you can build relationships with them and then promote to them and ultimately sell. Does that make sense? So ART stands for attract, R stands for relate, and C stands for conversion. So the number two key is having an ART system, a way to attract the type of client you want, start a conversation, and then ultimately sell to them, okay? So you guys, does that make sense? Like I'm gonna pause and you know take a sip because sometimes I go a little bit fast. Does that make sense to everybody? Like what, you got all these desires to sell travel to people, but then you, you're selling to your friends and family and your, your best experience is not that great. All right, so great. I've done better creating travel for friends, Moreno, than family, and then more people get on board due to word of mouth and their experience. It's great. And so again, I'm not saying that friends and family, you can't sell to them, but like if you're trying to leave your job with your friends and family, it's not likely. You gotta have a lot of friends and family. And so how I think of friends and family, if I think of them as extra, I think of them as the, you know, I'm not a, I love dessert, right? But they're like the icing to my cake. The primary cake is my, are strangers that are my ideal client. Friends and family, if they buy, that's great, you know, but I can eat cake plain <laughs> and love it, right? So they're extra. They're not the main core of my business, right? And my, my the reality is they shouldn't be for you either, right? If you're trying to build a business, right? Again, I'm not talking if this is a side hustle for you and don't get me wrong, no shade on the side hustle, but if you're really trying to build a business that you can leave a legacy with, that you can build a legacy around, that gets you to income replacement of your full-time job, right? You're going to have to have a strong game on how you attract strangers and lots of them consistently in your business, all right? All right, number three, you guys ready for number three? Number three key to your success. All right, number three key to your success is your offer, right? So many of you are, are waiting for somebody to pick up the phone and call you and define for you what you're going to sell. Does that make sense? I'm going to say that again. Many of you are waiting for someone to pick up the phone, ask for a quote, so you can define, so they can define for you what you will sell. You have no idea what your main, and what I call it is your main money maker, like what you mainly are going to sell in this business. You don't have any idea what that main money maker is. Maybe some of you do. But let's 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 have a conversation about it. What is it that you primarily want to sell out there? Out there, 
for those who are listening live, what do you want to sell? What is the main thing that you want to sell? Is it a trip to Aruba? Is it a cruise to Jamaica? What is the main thing that you want to sell in this business? And I love because there's always a little bit of a lag. So, right, when I when I started this business, I was like, I don't know what I want to sell. I don't know. Group travel and cruises. Cruises. Okay. Somebody's saying group travel. Okay. So group travel specializing in what? There's a lot of different groups. So group travel, and what I want to tell you is that there's there's really only two types of travel. There's either individual travel or it's group travel, right? Right? And cruises is just the mode of, of transportation, right? It's, it's a type of travel. So you could do cruises, you could do land travel, right? These are all types of travel, right? But this doesn't tell me what your main offer is, right? Is it is it a cruise that you your goal is to sell as many cruises on this particular itinerary and that's what you're gonna focus on, right? Right, I got experiences that, that bucket list luxury trip, Linda, that's great, but that's still vague, right? Family adventure travel, destination weddings in Greece and Costa Rica. M Mona, I'm gonna pick on you because that's very specific. Right, Mona's example is very specific. Destination weddings in Greece and Costa Rica, right? And the reason why I like that example is because she can now pick suppliers that focus in that destination. And obviously the suppliers that she's going to pick are going to be able to accommodate destination weddings, right? So when she comes and she offers and she starts talking to, and she starts building relationships with brides-to-bees or grooms-to-bees, right? she can be talking about what these people care about which is what is the best place to go and of course mona is going to be talking all about these destinations these resorts right in greece and what was the other one greece and costa rica right she can now build an entire marketing content plan around those two destinations she knows who her audience is she knows who her destinations are and she can now talk to those brides and bees she can create an entire relationship content path to all of those perspectives talking about what, what uh, brides to be and grooms to be are concerned about, right? Her niche is very specific. It's not only specific to the audience, it's specific to the destination, right? So she knows who she can pick her suppliers now. She doesn't have to worry about taking 15,000 different supplier training, she can focus on identifying suppliers in those two locations, right? When you tell me you want to sell cruise travel, do you know how many cruise companies there, there exist? There are thousands of cruise companies and each of those cruise companies have a market that they want to work with or that are the, the prime market, right? Cruising is just a mode of transportation, right? Luxury travel is just it's just a term. It doesn't even really tell me anything because my luxury is different than somebody else's luxury. What does that mean, right? So it's not just number three, is not just your offer. It's about being specific about the area of travel that you want to specialize to the to your audience and creating a path for you to focus on. Let, let me say that again, because that was kind of convoluted. Your offer is about understanding who your audience is, what they need, and what you will provide to solve that problem. So I'm going to use a couple more examples. Somebody says, I want, I want to, I, you know, my main moneymaker are experiences, that bucket list luxury trip, right? L let's kind of peel that back, right? And bucket list, what does that mean? Well, everybody knows the term bucket list, right? But what are like the top three things, that, places that you're going to want to focus on? talk about, immerse yourself in and learn. Because literally, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be the expert in everything, right? You cannot possibly be the expert in everything. There are hundreds of thousands, thousands of destinations to go to. There is no way that you can get enough knowledge in all of those destinations to really speak that very intelligently about them consistently and sell. So, what I want you guys to do, if you take away nothing else from this uh, training today, is think about what you can go deep in, right? So many of you all go horizontally. You are broad in your knowledge. You are broad in, in uh, your, your specialization. You're very broad. And so if you can just identify 
going deep, knowledge, gaining knowledge, becoming an expert in that area, uh, in that particular field, that is where the gold is. That is where the boss status is. That is where you're going to be able to focus your money, your energy, your time, your business on so that you can really excel in this business. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's clicking with you guys. So I'm not like trying to pick on anybody, just using your examples to help you guys see how you can truly be a boss in this space, right? So those people, like, so if I were gonna turn that around, Linda, what I would say is, you know, experience bucket list is I would be like, you know, I wanna go after senior retired, you know, senior retired people and um, so that they can experience their uh, their bucket list. And, and when I start talking to them and when I start pouring in and trying to relate to these seniors, I'd be talking about three main bucket list items that, you know, three places that I want to focus on or one or two places, right? Because really to become an expert, you really need to spend some time learning about a particular area, right? Even if it's cruises, I would pick I would pick one cruise line, maybe two at the most, right? And I would understand their itineraries and I would pick one or two of those itineraries. And I would, one, make sure that I've gone on the itinerary. I know about it. I've talked to the BDM about it. And I would get myself immersed in that itinerary. Does that make sense? So when I say what your main money maker is, what is it that you want to sell? What do you want to sell? And I don't mean high level. What do you want to sell consistently? Because if you want to not only make money in this business, being consistent in what you sell is going to help you with your suppliers. It's going to help you get bonuses and all the other perks that suppliers give you when you book with them consistently. Consistency in your bookings is going to also help you hit uh, pay dirt, right? All right. So does everybody understand all of that? So really number four, the very last thing is the specialization. And we've already talked a lot about that, but really... What I want you to take away tonight's training is to be a boss, right? You got to stop thinking that the small investment that you made with your host agency is all that you need. You need know-how, you need operations, you need a way to attract consistently the type of client you want. You need an offer that you can become an expert in and a special specialization in this travel business so that you can really start to relate to your client. Mona, she's a destination specialist in Greece and Costa Rica, right? She knows who her client is, so she should be after engaged individuals, right? That, that, that should be who her client is. That should be what her main focus is. She should be learning all about wedding destinations. She should be learning all about those suppliers who offer destinations in the uh, two locations that she wants, right? That's where you want to be as well, right? Does everybody understand that? Like, let me know in the comments. Now, if you are like a little lost or maybe you're like, okay, now what do I do? You definitely want to meet, you want to meet me on Saturday, right? So how many of you guys want to, want the information for Saturday? Some of you guys said that you can't join. Some of you are already enrolled or registered. Listen, this is the second time I've done this workshop. Um, this is going to be a little bit different than we did the first workshop but this is the Travel Business Blueprint Workshop. It is going down this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we are going to be spending, if you like this hour, just imagine what that Saturday morning is going to be like. We're going to be spending the time peeling back these four areas that we talked about. We are going to be peeling back not only what your operations need to be and what it takes to really have a successful uh you know, for lack of a better term, I'm going to use a formal term, right? To, to architect an operations business system inside of your travel business so that you can see success, right? Your clients have a great experience. You're operating efficiently and you're operating towards profitability, right? That's what you want. We're going to talk about what it takes to be able to build this arc system. How do you attract strangers? What is it going to take to do that? How do you create offers that really are going to be meaningful how an offer that's going to attract your uh, ideal client how do you keep how do you convert that you know stranger into a paying client we're going to be going over all of that on saturday right so if you're interested all you got to do is raise your hand and say me that uh, little hair that's uh, bugging me you, all you got to do is uh, raise your hand and say me and one of my client support specialists will reach out to you get you enrolled tonight this is free. Like it just doesn't get any better than this, right? So we're not reaching out to you to book a call 
to, to see if you want to join the program. I am going to be working with you all for free. Now, you do have an upgrade path. There's only four more days. I'm going to talk a little bit about that upgrade path. That upgrade path costs a couple of dollars, right? So if you want to upgrade and you want to work directly in the same fashion that we're doing, you're going to get the Zoom link and you can join me on the Zoom call. And those people that join me on the Zoom call will be able to ask questions. You'll be able to interact with me. Like I'm not really, like I'm sort of listening, watching and looking at the questions, right? But during that session, you're gonna wanna be able to ask questions. If you upgrade your experience for $1, you'll be able to join us on the Zoom link. You'll also get a workbook, which is your client attraction workbook. Learn all about how do you identify who your client is? You can do that $1. If you upgrade for $47, you're going to get two additional trainings. Not only Saturday, but you get two additional trainings that will come to you immediately. And then you also get to be a part of our VIP list where we're doing three prize giveaways during the session on Saturday. Listen, I love training. Like, I just love it. I love showing up. I love being here with you all. Um, somebody asked, will it be recorded? So Jacqueline, it will be recorded. And for those that um, upgrade to VIP, you will get the, the edited pre-recorded version um, inside of the Online Travel Boss School. So that will be available for our VIP -ers. So if you are interested, enroll now. If you're interested in upgrading your experience, listen, if you don't upgrade, I'm going to be broadcasting live inside of the special travel business blueprint uh, Facebook group that we have. So we've got, uh, I think we've got 150 people in that uh, group already who are introducing themselves. That's where I'll be broadcasting live on Saturday. So if you don't upgrade, that's no problem. You'll be able to get to the information and I will be broadcasting live inside of the group. If you do upgrade, you'll be joining me inside of the Zoom, uh, Zoom meeting and I will be answering questions directly throughout the entire session. We'll be doing breakout sessions and all of that great stuff. So super excited for those that have already uh, registered. Listen, the morning with me is a powerful morning. So you are definitely going to want to take notes, bring your notebook, because uh, your hands are going to be tired. We're going to be going. You think I talk fast now. We're going to be doing this all morning Saturday, talking all things about your building blocks for your travel business. So. Listen, um, Ivory asked, how do you upgrade? So uh, one of our specialists will reach out to you, Ivory, and they will give you the link to upgrade. It's a simple page. You fill it out, and you're going to get instant access to the workbook, and you're going to get access to our um, Zoom information so that you can um, join me on Saturday. Um, all right, so Lisa has to work, and that's okay. That's okay because I, uh, if you don't decide to join us this time, I believe on our schedule we've got one more opportunity this year and then we're done. But um, love, love, love to have those that are not working join me on Saturday because it will be a action packed day. So listen, before I go, because you know I could probably go on and on and on forever to the crack of dawn, but what I want to say is, is many of you all are in like information gathering mode and I am an action taker. I am, I teach by action. So Saturday is not about you learning. It is about you understanding what it takes for you to take the next steps into your travel business, right? So it is time for you to stop just learning and not acting this is the time to start acting, right? Is to start taking the knowledge that you have and having the steps to apply that knowledge. That is what we're gonna be going over on Saturday. So love to work with any of you all that will be joining us um, on Saturday. The entire team will be there. We've got an action packed agenda. And uh, with that, I'm gonna say skedaddle and I will see you guys on Saturday. So have a great uh, rest of your week and I'll talk to you soon, bye.